There's a popular saying among car enthusiasts. It goes built, not bought, but usually that just means, well, you slapped on some bolt-ons under the hood of your Civic. The cars on today's list though, <laughs> these are actually built by you in your garage. And the best part is that they are way cheaper than an equivalent supercar. What's up guys, my name's Danger, this is Ideal, and if you're new here, please subscribe, turn on that notification bell, and stay tuned because we are coming to you with eight cheap kits that you can build to chop supercars every day of the week. So, buckle up, and let's go. Now, we already did a kit car video, which you can find up here. So if you think we missed your favorite, like, you know, the Factory 5 GTM, which who doesn't love that one? Be sure to check out that video before hitting us up in the comments. Because in this video, we wanted to make sure that we covered a good variety of cars. So no matter what your budget or style is, there's something for you on this list. And we're gonna start with the K1 Attack, which is basically the ultimate MR2. Now, let's start with the basic, shall we? It's mid-engine, rear-wheel drive, and it absolutely rips to 60 in under three seconds. Plus, just look at those scissor doors. <laughs> yeah, boy. Do you think that we need those types of doors on the R8? Let me know. Don't, actually, don't let me know, because I already know the answer. Yes, the K1 kit is one really good-looking car and it's incredibly versatile. Since K1 is a new company that uses ultra-modern manufacturing techniques, they can basically send you a kit that accommodates whatever donor car that you have laying around, from Civics to BMW 335s to harnessing the power of a Tesla itself. I think we are starting off with a car that is probably the best value on the list, because Almost everyone knows where you can get a good old Civic SI for cheap. So all you really gotta do is pick one of those up and in this $10,000 kit, you will be driving fender to fender with any Lotus that dares to show its face. Or if you want, you can relive history and build one of the coolest Porsches ever, the 917. This is not the first or the last time we're gonna talk about the absolutely legendary Porsche GT car, which was so fast in the 70s, they literally had to change the rules of racing or else no one could compete. Porsche has always been good, but in the 70s, they were really good. But, well, a real one is gonna set you back like $10 million. So, keep that in mind as I tell you about the price of these stunning DIY replicas from RCR which are faithful recreations of the original with one major difference. They're actually street legal. <laughs> wow. Yeah, you heard that right. If you have the wrenching skills, you could be picking up your date in a legendary race car. And I really, really, really want one. Now, I'm just gonna assume here that you don't have a 1200 horsepower Porsche V12 laying around, so you're gonna need to source a power plant to go with your kit. Race car replicas or RCR recommend picking up an LS from a Corvette donor. Or you could pick up a water-cooled flat six from a 911 to keep it light and feisty. The only question is, do I steal the heart from the 997 or the 996? Well, the 996 has a Vision Motorsports 4 liter in it, so probably the 997. And at 48 grand, they are still a little expensive, at least for my checkbook. But you have to compare it to the cost of the experience, 50,000 or 10 million. Cannibalizing a nice 911 does seem kind of like a waste. So, well, do you have a Miata laying around instead? You guys knew this was gonna come up. Well, you were right. No, we are not talking about the Exoset, although those are really cool. This one, you're gonna get catfished because, well, it's the Bauer catfish, and it's also a Miata underneath. But the similarities kind of end there. Since, well, the Bauer catfish has the sculpted composite body that allows it to slip through the air and shaves more than 600 pounds off of the weight, which can make them lighter than the Exo car. So, <laughs> Are they fast? Hell yes. Are they cheap? For a supercar slayer? Absolutely. They come in at about 14,000, which is about a dollar per pound. <laughs> yeah. Now, Miata track cars are tame though. How about something insane to drive? The Lotus 7 
to me is an amazing car, but well, it's a little overdone at this point. Instead, Ronart took all the design cues from the classic 50s formula cars and created their own modern interpretation of what they call the W152. And what does modern interpretation mean? Well, disc brakes for one, and the option to use either a nice smooth inline six, uh, which you, you don't want, or the 300 horsepower Jaguar V12. <laughs> yeah, that one. Well is a ton of horses for a vehicle that only weighs about a ton. Honestly though, while this one will outrun all of its contemporaries, much like the modern Super 7 will, the real reason you wanna get the W152 is the sheer thrill of it. The noise. Open air and absolutely wild handling characteristics are something that everyone should experience at least once. And <laughs> All in, you're looking at about 30 grand for the V12 variant, or just 21 if you want the inline six. Either way, not a bad way to roll. So we've covered the 50s, we've hit the late 60s and the Porsche. Why don't we just roll into the mid 70s with one of the best rally cars ever made? Lancia is a company that time just sort of forgot. But before the 037 ever made history by defeating Audi in Group E, the Stratos was dominating the rally world. And <laughs> if I'm gonna be completely honest with you, I think it's one of the coolest cars ever made. So what if you want one? Well, $500,000, it's a lot of pennies. No, sorry. I, I don't have that kind of scratch laying around. The good news is, is, well, this video is all about cheap cars that you can build yourself. So for less than one tenth the price, you can get the Lister Bell STR replica kit. No, it's not a perfect replica. The original Stratos was a race bred monster that was barely controllable on the street. Naturally, the modern replica would be safer. Oh wait. I mean, it's faster. The price? Hmm, 30K for the base or 35K if you want a modern Toyota V6 with it. That's everything. Unlike a lot of kit cars, you don't need a donor, which is all right with me. And with that love letter to Italy out of the way, let's go back to the modern era with what is simply put one of the fastest cars that you can buy. Yeah. I'm just as excited as you are because this one comes from a company called Ultima, which makes sense because it's the ultimate car. No other qualifiers. It just straight up slaps a McLaren. In fact, the Ultima GTR 720 was the fastest car around the Top Gear test track until it was finally beaten by the $1.8 million Ferrari FXX. Their newest offering, the Ultima Evolution, is faster. Mm -hmm. Now wait, you are going to hate me. I totally get it because I'm about to tell you this is a cheap car, but the price starts at nearly a hundred thousand bucks and you still have to build it yourself. But hold that thought about me for one second because let's just take a look at the numbers. Zero to 60 in 2.3 seconds, 240 miles per hour top speed and a quarter mile in nine seconds flat. Only thing that comes even close to that level of performance is something like the Ferrari SF90 Stradale and it costs over five times as much. If you really want cheap as in actually cheap though, just pick up this next car on your list. But before we get into this next car, it's time for a visit from a very old friend. That's right, the honorable mention, babe. And for this installment, I just feel like having some extra fun. If you wanna beat a supercar, just head off road. Now we talked about the Goblin in our last video about kit cars. They're pretty fantastic. And the mad lads over at DF must have been bitten by the safari bug like I was because they've gone and made an off-road version of it. And what's absolutely amazing about them is that much like the aerial nomad, they are basically just modern versions of the tube frame doom buggies of the 1970s, complete with tight wheelbases for excellent maneuverability and more than three times the horsepower of the average air-cooled Volkswagen engine. Unlike the Nomad, however, which can cost more than $90,000, the Goblin AT can be built for less than 12 grand. And that is a hell of a deal on a safari off-roader. Okay, 
Now it's time for the next car. And like many cheap, fast car videos, we can't go without talking about the Corvette, right? Now this rounds out our list for not one, but two reasons. First, if everything else on our list has looked way too expensive, well then here you go. You can afford to build a Corvette cart. Secondly, it's not strictly a kit car. So I feel like it's cheating just a little bit, but it's an absolutely valid thing to talk about when you're talking about DIY cars. Now, chopping apart cars to make them go faster was definitely a thing before Roadkill did it, but I do think they sort of popularized the idea when they hacked apart a C4 Corvette to terrorize LA with. Since then, we've seen the likes of Cletus and B is for Bill both try their hands at building a Corvette cart. And guys, they look like so much fun to drive. You will have to be a little bit clever and probably learn to weld in order to pull it off. But honestly, you'll need those skills for really any kit car. See, normally you spend five grand on a donor car after spending 15 grand on a kit. Then the first step is to carefully strip down the donor car so that you can build the kit car on top of it. The Corvette cart is different. You just strip down a Corvette and voila, you're done. You should weld in a roll cage, but I'm not gonna tell you how to live your life. Just make sure you're you're safe out there. Wear your helmet. And the total cost? I found this C4 Corvette that is perfect. The body is already in terrible condition and it's just screaming to be reborn as a tube frame monstrosity for just 3,000 bucks. I, I might actually have to go buy that real quick. Just kidding. I mean, I'm not forcing you to buy another project car. And in fact, if you wanna buy an ideal car, which is one that you don't really touch and actually, uh, well, you, you, you keep rather stock, maybe a couple of mods, but you buy it so that you can enjoy it and then ultimately sell it for more money than you got it for. So if you wanna buy one of those and learn the seven mistakes that I see everybody make when they're buying those, check out our ideal car strategies up here. And I gotta know, what did you guys think of the list? Do you agree? Would you ever buy a car to build or have you? Let us know down below. And as always, it's awesome to give you your daily dose of Octane. So if you're new, please subscribe, turn on that notification bell. We have a ton of fun creating this content for you guys. And promise me one thing, say it with me. Keep living the ideal lifestyle.